It does take us back to what is happening with the central bank story. We're waiting for the Fed. 75 basis points looks like the base case. Could get 100, could get 50. Catherine Rooney Vera, Baltic Capital Markets CIO, joining us now uh, to give us her take on this. Catherine, what do you think is priced for later? What do you think moves markets? I think if the Fed doesn't do 75, markets move to the downside because it will be a complete jolt to what is left of Federal Reserve credibility with regard to inflation fighting. Um, there's been innumerable mistakes, mistakes made by the Federal Reserve, of course, uh, starting with inflation is transitory. There is no way to price spiral. Um, the labor market needs continued support. Remember that the Fed was still buying bonds up and through March of this year. What we're not talking about beyond rates, though, is a quantitative tightening. And supposedly that's going to start this month, too, to the tune of some $46 billion, mm -hmm. with the intention of that moving to $95 billion. The economy is not in a position to withstand that double-barreled approach. So I think there's a lot of potential, and this is something I said, Alex, going into this year, the biggest risk this year was Federal Reserve policy mistakes, uh, and I think there have been many. Um, Catherine, how then do you manage the risk around this Fed meeting? Well, I think what we've been telling our clients is to be defensively positioned in defensive sectors, and those have been by far the best performing ones year to date, and those are energy utility staples and healthcare. Um, we've been calling stagflation as the, as the main base case scenario for this year, and that seems to have been unfolding. Um, and what we're saying you know, going forward is um, be diversified, be looking into alternatives because the correlation in the 60-40 portfolio, we all know it doesn't work anymore. It's completely broken down. You have everything falling out of bed together. But what I'm most concerned about is what happens when we get that recession? What does the Fed do with its balance sheet? Does it go back into quantitative easing? Are we going to be whipsawed by Federal Reserve policy? And for that, I'll bring up something that no one has really been talking about, Alex, and that's the threat to a crisis of confidence in fiat money. You know, we need to unravel this ultra accommodative yeah. expansionary policy that we've seen for the past decade. And if we don't do it and yet get into a recession and have to revert back to the bad old ways of additional bond purchases and ETF purchases, then I think it just degrades and debases even further, not just monetary policy credibility, but the pure value of fiat currency. Catherine, in that kind of environment, actually in this kind of environment, in the environment we're in right now, we may get to that ultimately, you laid out a series of uh, areas that you're focusing on. Is putting money to work in those areas enough at this point to avoid losing money? That appears to be the question right now, not how do I make money, how do I not lose money? How do I not lose money is the question that we're getting a lot. Yes. And I think um, that having a cash position is a, is a really wise move. Um, making that rotation and, and taking some profits in your winners, I don't think is a bad idea. Um, moving into, if you're a dedicated equity investor, moving into the, the defensive sectors I enumerated, but also adding to your precious metals position, because if I'm right, we get... Uh, you know, additional policy mistakes, both from the fiscal and monetary side, then I think precious metals um, do very well over the long term. So mm -hmm. let's start to accumulate those. Let's diversify. Let's get into, um, you know, KKR put out a very good piece, which I thought was good. It enumerated different asset classes that can preserve your wealth. And those can be something like private credit, infrastructure, or real estate, just diversified beyond what is historically public markets that have been really blown up by uh, expand and manipulative monetary policy and something that ultimately has to unwind. So I would probably move increasingly into real assets and alternatives, including precious metals. Um, Catherine, I guess let me ask a di the same question in a different way. So that's like not how to lose money, but how do you then make money? And that are there certain sectors that have priced in a recessionary fears enough that now you need to start looking? Yeah, I guess you're referring to technology, um, communication services, and discretionary, because those have been walloped. Um, I think there's still further to go, because if the Fed does, in fact, jack up rates to the tune of you now 4%, which is many, in many cases, the market is priced in the terminal rate. Um, but if inflation expectations continue to move higher, which they are, and the Fed is unable, Alex, to control inflation, um, and therefore, ha they have to do even more. I would say that um, that tech discretionary and comm services have further downside to go. Of course, there's always going to be tactical plays. And for that, I wouldn't recommend sectors. In fact, the House view 
at Baltic is to look at specific names. You know, do your research, look at the fundamentally strong names, but maybe not go whole hog into uh, ETFs or the S&P 500. I think we're going to have to be selective, and I think there's a lot of risk to digest um, going forward, not just from mon monetary policy and, and the bubble that we've seen in the equity and, and fixed income markets, but also from the economic perspective. I'll just say one more real quick thing. What I'm really looking for is real wages. When do they turn positive? Do they turn positive? Because that would be a plus. That would be a positive for consumer sentiment, and that could ultimately make that precipitous drop that we've seen in consumer sentiment finally reach a bottom and possibly turn a corner. So watch for real wages. Is it possible, even at a granular level, at a single stock level, to get a handle on ultimately where we, we kind of go next if we don't know where the Fed, how aggressive the Fed is going to have to be here, Catherine? Yeah, that's why I would say, uh, you know, be more defensive. But for guys that want to play tactically, that would be my recommendation. Look at specific names. For people that, like me, we don't, you know, what, know what's going to happen, but we have a good idea of, of where things could go and the worst case scenario, right? The worst case scenario being, of course, recession and high inflation, which is stagflation. So under that scenario, I do think that you want to have a nice cash position. I do think you want to have um, so alternative exposure. You want to have real assets. You want to have real estate. You want to have uh, a gold. And, and I think this is what makes sense at this point. Um, I don't think we need to be in trying to time the market because that's historically impossible to do. Guys can say that they can do it, but the fact is they can't. Mm -hmm. um, so I think we just need to be very careful and, and be defensively positioned. Um, Catherine, it's really great to see you. Thank you so much for joining us. Catherine Rooney, Vera of Baltic Capital Markets. Good to see you.